Good morning, Connected Fellowship guests and online audience. My name is Kayla Walker, and on behalf of Pastor Hubbard, welcome to Palm Sunday at the Ship. Today, we celebrate Palm Sunday, where 2,000 years ago, a humble donkey, not a mighty stallion, carried our Savior, who came to meet our need. On the first Palm Sunday, they laid coast out, a path so grand as Jesus entered Jerusalem, the Holy Land. The crowd shouted Hosanna with their voices and they raised and waved palm branches. Today, we lift our voices in joyful song. In him, we can stand strong. It is Jesus we adore and having him, there's no need for more. Let's give God thanks for his incredible grace, sending his only son to take our place. So let us praise the life giver King who is worthy of every song we sing. It's time to worship. On the way to Jerusalem, a great crowd met Jesus shouting praises. Hallelujah, hallelujah. People were waving palm branches because Jesus is victorious. Others were laying their cloaks down before him. Symbolizing all that we have, they give it away. Many shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna. But what do they really want? Do they want a king? Or do they want a cross? Do they want their way? Or do they want it God's way? Their way? He would have ridden a white stallion. God's way, he rode in on a donkey. Their way? He would have become Israel's king. God's way? He came as a humble servant, setting an example for you and me. Their way, he would have saved them from the Romans. But God's way, he saved us all from sin and death. Their way, he would have lived as royalty. But God's way, he died for the sins of the world. Their way, we would still be lost in our sin. Whose way do you want? Your way or, or God's, God's way? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God shining upon us. Take the sacrifice and bind it with cords on the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you 
You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now let us pray. Almighty God, on this day, your son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed king by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches, Lord, be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name, may we ever hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Help us sing this morning. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, 
your mind. Throw your fist right back in the air. That's how we sing the story. Lord, you're mighty. 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 You got to be glorious. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Y'all, it's that time. I know we're not used to it, but since this is Holy Week, we wanted to do communion again. <clears throat> and whenever you do it again, you get a game. You'll catch that on the way home. <clears throat> but this is our time. So whether you're online or in present uh, in the house, we gather together again to remember the supreme. Did I say supreme? Supreme, supreme sacrifice that our Lord Jesus, our Savior, made for us. So, as we pass out the elements, <clears throat> well, let me have one. So, get your elements, whether it be bread and wine, crackers, juice. Let's share this time together known as communion. <laughs> the Lord's Supper was the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples in the upper room just before he was captured tried and convicted on trumped up charges of blasphemy and false testimonies. It was in that upper room where Jesus commanded his disciples to remember his supreme sacrifice, to reconcile, make, fix, make us right, to fix and to restore us mm, to a holy God. That's what the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is all about. It's about Jesus, the Son of God, restoring our relationship with his Father. He made us right and acceptable with God. And it's because of his salvific work on that old rugged cross and a bar did i say a bar bar it tune because he wouldn't be there long because of him we are friends with god so come to the table that table where jesus gave his disciples an experience they would never forget the table where jesus called us to remember never to forget that he was wounded mm, for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Never forget that the chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
never forget that by his stripes we are healed and never forget that if Jesus Christ can handle your greatest problem which is sin whatever situation you in he can handle your latest problems so come to the table where we remember that the Bible said that the Lord Jesus on that same night in which he was betrayed he took bread when he had given it in, blessed it he broke it and said take eat this is my body which was broken for you do this in remembrance of me you may eat and in the same manner he took the fruit of the vine saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do this in remembrance of me and as often as you drink this you remember my sacrifice just for you let's drink for as often as you eat the bread and drink this cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes let's clap our hands let's thank god for the gift of remembrance thank you lord
be here if it wasn't you, you are the reason. You are the reason, King. Lord, you see that in the eye. sing it again. Death could not hold you down. The grave could not hold you down. Sin could not hold you down. The cross could not hold you down. Why? You were the risen king. Just in case you're wondering, he seated in majesty. You ought to sing it. He is. You are the risen king. Death could not. Death could not hold you down. Come on, clap your hands. You ought to sing that song like you wrote it. You are the risen king. The Lord is seated in majesty. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the one the prophets talked of about. You are the reason. One more time, death could not hold you down. No, no. You are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. You sit up high and you look down low. Lord, you sit it in majesty. Cause you are the real, are the real king. Amen. Come on, don't stop clapping right there. He is the risen king. Hallelujah. You ought to give him some praise. I said you ought to give him some praise. Give him, give him praise. Amen. Give him praise. Give him praise. One of the reasons we ought to give him praise is because he deserves it. I said he deserves it. There's a songwriter who some years ago says, has he done, have, what have you done for me lately? Let me just bring you back. Did he wake you up this morning? That's lately. Did he put activity in your limbs? That's lately. Has he put food on your table? That's lately. Did he put gas in your tank? That's lately. Is your bills paid? That's lately. Give him praise. Because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Amen. 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 Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Come on and grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles. If we pray, we can say our pre-Easter speech and we can go get in line early. Amen. I want to segue us into the Holy Week. Today is the start of what is called the Holy Week. It is, in a very real sense, the triumphant entry of Jesus into the Holy City. Palm Sunday represents that. It is the time when he comes into that Holy City and the people of God took palm branches. They waved them. Some texts say that they even laid them on the road as he rode in on a donkey, crying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That was on Sunday. By midweek, all of that celebration took on a different turn. I want to bring us midweek. We've celebrated. Can I take you to Wednesday? Turn in your Bibles to John chapter number 13. John chapter 13, I want to break right into this text in your own quiet times with God. I want to encourage you to read chapters 12 and 13. It's going to bless your life just by the reading of God's word. But I'm breaking right into this dramatic scene. The disciples and Jesus have just sat at the table. You've just shared in communion. The Lord's last supper. And here it is. We find ourselves at the table. They have just broken bread there. They have just shared a last drink together. And notice what is about to happen here. Beginning at verse number 18, the word of God says from the New International Version of the Scriptures, I'm not referring to all of you. He has just disclosed some alarming information. And he tells them, I am not referring to all of you. I, I, I know those I have chosen. But this is to fulfill this passage of Scripture. He who shared my bread has turned against me. Lord, have mercy. Did, did, did y'all hear what I just said? He who shared my bread has just turned against me. I'm telling you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. I'm about to shout my own self here. Skip down to verse number 21, and after he had said this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit. Somebody say troubled. He was troubled in spirit, and he testified, very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples, disciples stared at one another and at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple, hey, man. Ask him what he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, come on, kinfolk. Who is it? Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. And as soon as Judas, listen now, took the bread, Satan entered into him. Are y'all listening? So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. For a few minutes, I want to put a tag on this Palm Sunday message. I'm not going to talk about a donkey. I want to talk about betrayed. 
would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, Pastor Hubbard's going to talk about betrayed. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Betrayed. 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 Father, bless these next few moments is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Betrayed. Like a silent predator, it creeps into the fabric of relationships, poisoning trust, shattering foundations. It lurks beneath pretty smiles and pleasant kisses and promises, waiting to strike when least expected. The wounds it inflicts cut deep leaving scars that never fully heal. My brothers and sisters, it undermines the very essence of connections, turning friends into foes, allies into adversaries, lovers into litigants, sisters into strangers and brothers into betrayers. The wounds cut deep and the wounds leave scars. Somebody say scars. Betrayal, my brothers and sisters, insidious nature lives and thrives into deceit and treachery that oftentimes go unnoticed until it's too late. And the aftermath of betrayal leaves behind a trail of shattered fate and broken hearts. My brothers and sisters, this is the tension and the reality of our text. In the context of our text in chapter 12, Jesus has, yes, just entered into the holy city of Jerusalem, riding on a donkey to the chats and celebrations of people crying, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is a high moment. This is a momentous moment. This is an unforgettable moment as the people celebrated the Christ. The Bible says they were so excited until they paved the dusty road of Jerusalem with their outer coats and laid palm branches before him like a king who has just returned from battle. Victorious. <laughs> they celebrated his name. They celebrated his presence in a very real sense. They worshipped him. They didn't fully understand what they were doing, but they worshipped him. They joined with the crowd and gave him praise. I'm oftentimes wonder how people can be in the same place where praise is going on and not give some. I often wonder why people can be in the house of worship and never worship. But can I pause here parenthetically and tell somebody, you don't have to fully understand everything about God to worship him. Can I say that one more time? I said, you don't have to know everything about God in order to give God what he is due. Yes, a deep understanding enhances our worship of him. But can you tell your neighbor it's not required? It's not required. It's not required for us to know everything about him. Because if we knew everything about him, we would be him. And I come to serve notice to somebody, you are not him. <laughs> Thought I was going to have more amens right there. They worshiped him with the little that they knew of him. They knew what he had done for them. They knew that he had healed the sick and raised the dead. They knew his power. They heard where he had stopped the funeral procession, touched the casting, and told the young man, get up. And they, they, they knew him. They were there when he caused a dead man named Lazarus to come out of his tomb. They knew him. They heard about his ability to walk on water, and some were even there when he turned water into wine. Somebody say, hey. They, they, they did not fully understand every aspect of his life, but what they knew about him was enough to serve as the cornerstone of their praise. They worshiped him. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
And I come this morning to tell somebody, you don't have to fully understand everything about God to worship him. And worship is not about knowing everything. It is about believing in somebody, in someone who knows you, who knows everything about you, and knows everything about me. Friends, they cried Hosanna in chapter 12. Chapter 13, we begin to see the compromise of one of his disciples. Yes, compromise and conflict. You know, the two oftentimes go together. They go hand in hand like birds of a feather. They flock together. And compromise sometimes can lead to resolution and harmony, but conflict can arise when viewpoints start to clash. Are y'all listening to me? When interests change, when there are disagreements that compromise can't settle, when there are competitive interests or power struggles, there will be conflict and confrontations. Compromise and conflict is both complex and dynamic. How, how do I know? Because Jesus in chapter 13 has just performed one of the most loving expressions recorded in scripture. He washed his disciples' feet. Y'all missed that? I said he washed his disciples' feet. You still didn't hear me. He washed feet. This is not some hired servant, but the son of God washing dusty and dirty feet. The Bible says he took off his outer garment, Lord have mercy, wrapped a towel around his waist, poured water into a basin, and he washed his disciples' feet. And conflict arose. Peter, one of his disciples, said in the Hubbard translation, man, what are you doing? You trying to wash my feet? Negative. <laughs> You're not washing my feet, sir. I said, that's the Hubbard translation. Jesus said, Pete, listen, if, if I don't wash you, you can't hang with me. Peter said, well, since you're standing on business, Lord, don't just wash my feet, but wash my hands and my, and my head. And here it is, after this encounter with Peter, lies the sinister seeds of betrayal. Jesus says, now, Peter, you are clean, but not every one of you. Did y'all hear me? He said to Peter, you are clean, but not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. I said he knew who was going to betray him. He knew who was going to double cross him. He knew who was going to display acts of distrust. But all oh, my brothers and sisters, that is something powerful about being informed. I wish I had some help here. I said there's something powerful about being informed. Can I get at least one witness? Being informed is like having a superpower in a world filled with uncertainties. When you know in advance, you can make better decisions. Can I get a witness here? When you're learned, you can navigate complex situations with confidence and clarity. Can I get some help here? When you are aware of your enemy schemes, you can play chess while they playing checkers. Informed individuals are empowered and equipped to challenge misinformation and combat ignorance in an era of fake news. Being informed empowers you to shape your reality and make moves that counter your adversary. The Bible says, listen to this, he knew. Y'all missed it. He knew who was going to betray him. And what blows my mind is this Jesus does not react to betrayal the way you and I do. You missed that. He don't respond to betrayal in the same manner that we do. You see, when we discover that betrayal is at our doorsteps, 
<laughs> we confront the betrayer. We fight our betrayer. We get even with our betrayer. When we are wrong to harm, our instinct is to retaliate. Uh, yes, because uh, of our sense of injustice. But Jesus does not do what you and I would do. He does what you and I would never do. He loved on his betrayer. Are y'all listening? I said he loved on his betrayer. He didn't mistreat his betrayer. He didn't speak negatively about his betrayer. He, he did not spread rumors about his betrayer. He, he did not put his betrayer's feet in scolding hot water. Y'all know I'm right about it. If you had had that towel around your waist, you'd have had the water a little, little hot. Can I get a witness here? Anybody ever had their feet in scolding hot water? I messed around the other day. Our water heater gets hot. Our water heater warms. Our, I mean, it doesn't warm the water. It, it gets hot. And uh, I just finished Monday. Deb, I finished cutting the grass. I was tired. I was dirty and dusty, full of pollen and dirt. Had, and uh, after raking leaves and cutting front and backyard, and I had to go get in the shower, y'all. So I went in and I turned the water on in advance. Stepped in that tub. And that water was hot. I was dancing, y'all. In my own in my own tub. Water that I had made. And I even betrayed myself. Now, you know that if it had been you, and you knew who your betrayer was, you wouldn't have washed his feet gently like Jesus did the other disciples' feet. This is problematic. It's problematic because this is not how we handle human interactions to betrayal. Talk back when you can. Some of us got annual memberships to the eye for eye community. Some of us got subscriptions to the Get Even campaign. And depending on our mood, we'll even fight you. Y'all not gonna say amen. We deal with our haters. And if our haters want attention, we give it to them. We don't respond to hate with love. We don't disarm hostility to them. Oh, we prepare to deal with it. But this text blows my mind because Jesus does not respond like we respond. In this chapter, Jesus gives Judas his betrayer multiple opportunities to examine his ways. Can I show you? Jesus' betrayer is not an outsider. Are y'all listening? Not somebody from the outside. Judas is an insider. Judas is one of the 12 disciples. Judas walked with Jesus for three years. Judas, like the other disciples, left everything he had to follow him. Judas was called by the Lord, just like he called Peter and James and Andrew and Bartholomew and Matthew and Philip and, and Thaddeus and Simon the Zealot. Judas, can I blow somebody's mind? Judas was active in ministry. Like the other disciples, Judas too had power and authority over demons, and he had the ability to cure diseases. Judas 
Read the Bible. He was sent out to proclaim the kingdom of God just like the others. Two by two. He was partnered with somebody to tell somebody about God's kingdom. And my friends, you couldn't have a better role model than, Jesus, than Judas because he walked with God. He was there when Jesus fed 5,000 people with two fish and five loaves. He was there when the storm-tossed sea was told to lay down and go to sleep. He was there when Judas, yes, when, when, when Jesus told a dead man named Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Judas was there. He was the disciple. And yet, it is this man that betrayed the king of kings and the lord of lords. Who would betray somebody with this kind of power and this kind of authority? This was the burning question at this last supper when Jesus messed up the dinner by saying, one of you will betray me. The burning question around the table was, who is it? Wouldn't that be a question you want to ask? If you were sitting there, you want to know who it is. Wives want to know who you've been with. <laughs> Husbands want to know where you've been. Y'all not going to say amen. Who is it? <laughs> Bible says that Big Mouth Peter leaned over to John. <laughs> he didn't have the gall to ask the question himself. But he engineered the question. Lord, it's preaching all up in there. He wouldn't ask the question because he's been known to, to spout off some stuff and then get in trouble. And so he leans over the Bible, say, it's in the book. He leans over to John and say, John, why don't you ask him? Since you're the beloved disciple. Y'all not going to help me in here today. And John said, now, Lord, who? who? <laughs> who is it? And, and Jesus, huh, he didn't put him on blast. He just said, look it, look it, look, look, you got to pay attention. I, I'm not dropping no names. But it is the one who dips after me. And he handed off the bread to an insider named Judas. It was Judas, y'all. The question is, who is this? Resonates because it is possible, are y'all listening? That the disciples was concerned that it could have been any one of them. Because truth of the matter is all of us have got a little bit of Judas in us. Lord, help me. The compromise of Jesus, of Judas. And here it is. I want you to notice now. Do y'all know how loving Jesus really is? I told you he doesn't act like we act. He gave it to Judas. Judas dipped. Can I blow your mind? Bible says that the moment that he dipped, Satan 
entered into him. You got to do some work. Don't just take my word for you. I told you, you got to read the text because truth of the matter is this is not the first time Judas has had an encounter with Satan. Lord, help me today. Earlier in the text, Judas has been entered when he can, has a confrontation and, and, and a counsel with the chief priest about Jesus. Can I just pause here? Being entered by Satan doesn't look like what we think it ought to look like. That's why you ought to read the Bible. There's encounters of Jesus having encounters with people who were controlled by the demonic. Are y'all listening? One of them lived in the graveyard. One of them cut on himself. One of them did self-harm. Are y'all listening? And God, in the form of Jesus, healed him. There's another one, a young man who was controlled by demonic and his his father brought him to Jesus, brought him to his disciples, and his disciples could do nothing about it. And when, when the father gives the description to Jesus, he says, here's what happened. He throws himself into the fire. And he throws himself, tries to throw himself into the water. Are y'all listening? Because the book says, whenever you are controlled by the enemy, you have an outward behavior that is not ordinary. But Satan has entered Jesus, entered Judas. And he ain't trying to kill himself. He's not trying to throw himself in the fire. In fact, he's living an ordinary life with the master. Serving, <laughs> ministering, smiling in face. Because being entered by Satan doesn't always look like what it looks like. Can I pause here and tell you that you need to be careful about the doors that you leave open. I tell our family every night, make sure you lock the door. Don't, don't leave the door open. Don't leave it unlocked. People do come in. And if people come in, they don't have good intentions. Y'all not helping me today. Somebody say lock the door. Judas had unlocked doors. He had the unlocked door of thievery. Bible says that he used to pinch <laughs> out the money bag. He's described as a thief. That's an open door. And he did it more than once. Oh, I wish I had time. My time is gone. I know I'm right about it because if you read chapter 13, one of the most loving events outside chapter 12, outside of one of the most loving events take place in Jesus's life. His feet and his head are washed by a woman with an expensive bottle of perfume. Bible says that she dries his feet with her hair. And Judas said, man, we could have took that perfume and sold it and got paid. Because this was not some perfume that you buy at Walgreens. 
Then come from Ross dressed for less. This is, yeah, it comes from Tiffany's. It's worth a year's salary. And yet, he betrays Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. I did my research. I did my research. I did my homework, family. I did my homework. 30 pieces of silver in today's monetary value is $400. You mean to tell me Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me for $400? Doesn't seem like a fair exchange. Betrayed for 30 pieces. 30 pieces of silver. You have to be careful. We can't be too hard on Judas. In one sense, I'm almost thankful for Judas. Because sometimes betrayal will push you towards your destiny. It's painful. It leaves scars. You have wounds, but it pushes you towards your destiny. You can't get up if you've never been knocked down. He betrayed the Lord that left scars in his hands. Scars in his feet. Wounds in his side. And Jesus never said a mumbling word. He ends by telling Judas, whatever you do, go do it quickly. At that moment, he gave Judas an opportunity to change his mind. But because Judas surrendered to Satan, Jesus went to the cross. Betrayed. I'm going to leave him. I'm going to leave him in the cross. I'm going to leave him in the tomb because it's not time to get up yet. Wow. Uh, you must... I'm going to even say it backwards. Wow. Somebody kissed that on the way home. <laughs> Ooh, it's decision time. Um, Max Lucado wrote a chapter on this. Uh, he called it Finding Gold in the Garbage. And what he said was that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane called Judas a friend. And this pastor just said, even betrayal gets you to your destiny. And so he called him friend because he was helping him get to his destiny. And God wants you to get to your destiny. But you don't have to be betrayed. You can call him friend because he is a friend of yours. And he has already done everything for you. 
Did I say everything? Everything. So on this Palm Sunday, as we reflect on the humility and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have cheer. We praised him, knowing that he would face great suffering for the salvation for all of us. And so right now, leaders are standing. Here's your opportunity to invite to commit yourself to him or even recommit yourself to him following his example of love compassion and selflessness even watch this in the face of challenge somebody may be going through it even now you may have been betrayed and i i Sometimes I don't like what God tells me to do. I'm no, I know y'all are holy, but sometimes I just don't like what God tells me to do. And God says, rejoice always. I don't feel like rejoicing. I'm in stuff. Then he says, give thanks for all things. For this is the will of God. I don't feel like doing that sometimes, but if you obey him, life can change for you and so i'm asking you if you have not done it invite on this palm sunday embrace the spirit of servanthood and walk the path of faith with unwavering dedication just as jesus did he came did i say he came he came he died for you and for me if you're online you can put in the chat i want to believe i want to receive Jesus Christ, come forward and give your life. Leaders are standing. We're here just for you and we'll welcome you. Maybe you're giving yourself to Christ. You need a church home where you can know how to live this life. We welcome, we offer connection fellowship to you. Your life can be changed. And we thank God for what he is doing and what he's going to do, what he will do for you. Here's your time. Grace of God, how we thank you so much for the decisions that have been made. Thank you for showing us how to live when we've been betrayed. You said they are friends because they help us get to our destination that you have designed for us. So Lord, we celebrate even now this first day of Holy Week, and we thank you for your sacrifice, supreme sacrifice. And we pray that somebody would believe the report, believe and receive you, and change their destiny, change their life, because of what you did for us on Calvary. We love you, and we praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody say it. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Y'all, you know what time it is? It's offering time. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, did I say the Bible? The Bible says, give and it will be given to you. What will be given? I'm glad you asked that question. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over will be put into your lap. For with the same measure you measure, it will be given back to you again. That's Luke 638. And so we ask that you would give. Uh, you can give in three ways uh, at Connecting Fellowship. Uh, the first way you can give is you can go on to connectingfellowship.org, put in your amount there, be safe and secure. Or you can do text give. You can dial the number 346-230-1510. Uh, I'm sorry, 340-230-1510. Uh, and put your amount there. Again, you can put 100 thousand ten thousand whatever i don't want to you know i don't want you to be burdened when you walk out so go ahead and give to the kingdom of god and then you can also get an envelope here uh if they're passing them out you can give here or you can mail your checks and money order uh, to 15730 west hardy suite 300 houston texas and we thank you for your liberality and it's because of you that we can do what we do but we want to do more we want to bless the kingdom. We want to expand the kingdom. We want to get out of this place. Did I say that? 
We want to build it for ourselves. So if you give more, we can get there. So we thank you for all that you're doing for us, for the kingdom of God. Gracious God, how we say thank you for every giver. Bless them in a very special way for their obedience and for the faithfulness to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Y'all ready for the announcements? Let's do it. Now, here are your upcoming announcements at the ship. Thank you for worshiping with us in person and in our virtual sanctuary. We pray you are blessed and encouraged by today's worship and word. Happy birthday to all the March babies. On behalf of your Connecting Fellowship family, birthday blessings to every one of you, and may the Lord bless you real good. And happy anniversary to all of our lovely couples. May God's best forever be upon your youth. Join us for PUSH. Pray until something happens. Monday mornings at 6 a.m. or Monday evenings at 8 p.m. Visit the website for prayer line information. The countdown has begun for a powerful and uplifting Resurrection Sunday celebration. Don't miss this inspiring and transformative Easter Sunday service that will uplift your spirit and renew your faith in Jesus. The celebration begins at 10 a.m. This concludes our announcements. We are Connecting Fellowship, connecting people to Christ, church, and community. Have a great week. And the church said amen. Say amen one more time. Next Sunday, next Sunday, you already know what time it is. And if you can't get excited about next Sunday, uh, come see me afterwards. We need to we need to have a little convo. We need to have a little, little talk. Just a little talk. Just a little talk. Uh, wood that's wet, I discovered, it does not start a good fire. It does not burn very well. Uh, so the question is, we got to dry the wood out. And so next Sunday, next Sunday, the greatest day, greatest day in history, the day that really causes all of us to be here and alive and well and to be able to do what we do is the fact that uh, he is no longer dead. And so let us come together. Uh, I need you. I need you. I need you to call everybody who you haven't seen. I need you to, 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 to bring people to the house. Amen. Or those some weak amen. Say amen again. Amen. Those of you who have been watching us online, come offline, come offline, and come in the building. Amen. amen. Come offline, come, come in the building, come in the house, come in the house. We we'll welcome you. We're waiting to see you. Those of you out of town, come on in town. Those of you in another state that's watching, come on fly in. Yeah. Let's have a great time of celebrating celebrating the resurrection of of our lord can we give it up one good time for for our young dancers for our young adult dancers can we give it up for tori and and miss veronica white can we give it up for the praise team give it up for pastor michael j smith now, where are all of the March babies? All right, all right, all right. Well, March is crunk. I see March, March. Okay, March. Okay, March. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling March, March. Okay. March is not bad. It's just full of pollen. That's all. They, they not bad. Oh, caught me right there. Yeah, yeah, March, March. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you, March babies. God bless you. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. This past week, I see him here today. Oh, yeah, B2. Oh, he in the back. B2 celebrated his birthday. How old? 16 now? 16. Boy, he making his mom and daddy old. And, and some others, and some others turned turned another year too. They stepping closer to the upper room. Happy birthday to each and every each and every March baby. Anybody else? Anybody else? God bless you. 
God bless you. So good to see so many faces, so many familiar faces too as well. Thank you so much for being in the house today. Listen, listen, betrayal hurts. There's nothing more sinister than betrayal. Uh, doesn't matter where it occurs. It always comes from unexpected sources. In fact, one of the things I've discovered about betrayal is that it masquerades as a friend, when in reality, it is your enemy. They don't have your best interests at heart. And you can only betray somebody in which you give them trust. If you haven't entrusted them with anything, there is no betrayal. But if you've entrusted them with your life, your love, your money, you name it, whatever you've given to them, then if they abuse it, misuse it, it hurts. I know it's hard for us to even think about, but can we think about trying to do it God's way? It makes no sense. It boggles the human mind to think that we ought to love the one who betrays us. But as we come to a conclusion, can we try it? God's way. And not our way. Because if we try it God's way, It'll lead us to our destiny. You'll still have wounds. <laughs> you will still have scars. Yes, but you will be what God wants you to be. Let's stand. Master on this triumphant Sunday, we know that this Holy Week is filled with all kind of drama. That's going to be betrayal. That's going to be the be misinformation. It's going to be all kind of things that are thrown at you. And we're reminded of your lessons. Help us to be like you. And not like ourselves. Father, forgive us for leaving doors of opportunity to Satan. He's been trying to sneak in. He's been checking doors and windows looking for places of entry. Lord, may we not yield to the temptation. And if we have, forgive us. Cleanse us, shut the door, bar the door, lock it closed. And Father, if we have been betrayed, help us to love like you loved. We'll be careful to give you the praise. Thank you for giving us an example to follow. Now watch over us and keep us until we meet again. We say now unto him who's able to keep us from falling and able to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and honor, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And all of God's people said amen. Say amen again. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday if the Lord says the same.